Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day, what a of, day rejoicing of rejoicing that will be. When we all, when we all see Jesus. Jesus will sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway clouds will overspread the sky but when traveling days are over not a shadow not a sigh when we all when we all get to heaven what a day, what a of, rejoicing day of rejoicing that will be when we Jesus will sing and shout the victory, shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day, what a of, day of rejoicing be. that will be when we all when we all see Jesus will sing and shout the victory, shout the victory. when we yes all when we all get to heaven what a day, what a day, of, day of rejoicing be. that will be when we all when we all see Jesus will sing and shout the victory, shout the victory. when we Jesus, we'll sing, sing and, and shout the victory, shout the victory.
half of the family, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you here. What a great privilege we have today to celebrate the life of a man of God. If you knew Brother Weber for any period of time, you knew. Here's a man who loves his Lord, and the Lord had transformed his life. Today, we are going to be singing songs. We're going to be looking at scripture, all of which were prepared ahead of time by Brother Weber himself. He, he knew his day was coming. And he knew that at this moment, he wanted his Lord to be honored and magnified. And that's exactly what we want to do. Let's pray and ask God to bless our time together this morning. Father, as we come before you, we come before you sorrowing for the loss of a loved one. But Father, we come before you in joy, knowing that we celebrate a life lived with purpose for your honor and glory for a life that was dedicated to you, surrendered to your will. And Father, we come today celebrating the fact that Richard Weber is more alive today than he has ever been. And the joy of celestial air fills his lungs. And as he basks in the glory of your presence today, he understands it was worth it all. And so, Father, as we come to your word, as we sing praise, may it be honoring and glorifying to you, because, Father, you alone are worthy of honor and praise. And today, we celebrate Richard Weber, but we celebrate you in his life. It is because of Christ we ask it. Amen. Brother Weber asked that at his funeral, Psalm 121 be read. So we are going to put the words on the screen behind me. If you would, join me in standing. And let's together read. I'll kind of lead, but you just read right along with me <laughs> as we read Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Now we'd like to take just a moment and sing the great song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Well, Sonny, if you'll come. Thou changest not thy 
your heart singing. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great Good morning, I'm Steve Flam with uh, Veterans of Foreign War Post 2681, of uh, which Richard was a member. And um, I'm honored uh, this, this morning to, to be here. Six years ago, I met Richard when he joined the VFW. Uh, we had an immediate bond because I have a fascination with World War II and the greatest generation, which he was certainly part of. And then especially that he served in the Army Air Corps, which the year after he got out was renamed the U.S. Air Force, which was also my unit. And I'm very proud that the family chose to put the Air Force emblem on the hearst as we carry Richard to the Canton Cemetery for Veterans. Richard is a wonderful person and we're all going to miss him. But he's been called now to the high command and he has already met the greatest commander of all. We also shared, I learned from Dan, when he told me about the hymn, which is also my favorite. So we, we shared many things together and we're, we're going to miss him. And as a veteran, he honored the flag and today the flag honors him. Well, I'm honored to be here too. My name's Sonny Lollerstadt. Um, I have known this family now for just a little over 20 years. And it was about that time uh, when, I, when I got to know the family it was when uh, Harold and Dawn, we all started attending a new church together. And so we were all on the foundation of this, uh, of this new beginning for this ministry. Uh, and if you know them, it's not going to be long before you meet the rest of the family. These guys are pretty tight. And so um, uh, it wasn't long before uh, uh, Richard was down, Richard and Faith were down, and uh, I believe that he baptized Craig uh, at this little place that we were meeting. And, um, and so I don't know that I got to meet him that day, but it wasn't long after that that, uh, that I got to meet. And, uh, and it was one of those things that he was always going to be checking out what you were doing and why you were doing it. And I think he, I remember meeting him, and it was like, I'm, I'm Sonny, and it's good to meet you. And he went, hmm. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's just like, so who are you, and why do you do what you do? And, and that's just because of his great love and reverence for who Jesus is. And he wanted to make sure that everybody that handled the gospel did it with, in, in such a way that it truly honored the Lord, that it brought him honor and glory. And, and so he was, he was that kind of man I knew right off the bat. It's like, this, this, this brother means business, you know, he does. So over the next few years, uh, occasionally they would come down and worship with us. And our worship was a little bit different in our church, a little more of the contemporary nature. And, and so he was like, I know y'all love Jesus, but this is a little different, you know, and but still very graceful. But then about 10 years ago, and, and just up uh, the last time that we really got to spend time, my wife and I, Becky, Becky and I got to spend a good hour on February 22nd uh, uh, for, the, for the latest grand, uh, great-grandbaby shower, right? 
And so um, we were excited. We sat in the kitchen across from him. And, uh, and we, we, we dug deep in the life. He went really from the very beginning all the way to the present time in his life. It was so awesome to watch how, uh, how tender and how gracious. And I've noticed a change in, in him over all these years. It was an awesome thing to see. And as I was thinking about his life and just thinking about our interactions and see this change that Jesus was continuing to do in his life and my life too, uh, I thought about this verse. Proverbs 27, 17, it says, Iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And I know that he has sharpened uh, many, many a man's soul, that iron there, as well as his with others that have sharpened his. But when you really see what Jesus had done in his life, how that Jesus had sharpened the iron of, of, of his soul, of Richard's soul, it was a tenderness there. There was a softness of heart. There was an embracing of like, Lord, I see you moving in so many ways. Your ways are vast. You're amazing how you move and how you work. And sometimes it's a little beyond the scope of what I perceive it. I see you moving in all kinds of ways, in the power of your Holy Spirit and giving God honor and glory. So I'm just so thankful. The Lord continues to show us and to teach us all through our life. At my age, I think I'm in school more than I've ever been. But after spending time uh, with Richard Weber that night for Becky and I, I realized that he was still in school and that he was still learning from the Lord. And he was so thankful for the way that Jesus was continuing to reveal himself and was so looking forward even more to being in the Lord's presence. So I'm glad that we get to uh, together uh, celebrate that, that homecoming and, uh, and just to uh, thank the Lord for the life that he represented and how he represented Jesus so well. Amen. First thing I would like to share with you is a poem that Dick chose himself entitled, If Tomorrow Starts Without Me. If tomorrow starts without me, and I'm not here to see, if the sun shall rise and you find your eyes all filled with tears for me, I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today while thinking of the many things we didn't get to say. I know how much you love me as much as I love you, and each time that you think of me, I know you'll miss me too. But when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand. He said my place was ready in heaven far above and that I had to leave behind all those I dearly love. But as I turned and walked away, a tear fell from my eye. For all my life, I'd always thought I didn't want to die. I had so much to live for, so much yet to do. It seemed almost impossible that I was leaving you. I thought of all the yesterdays, the good ones and the bad. I thought of all the love we shared and all the fun we had. I could really live yesterday, but even for a while, I'd say goodbye and kiss you and maybe see you smile. When I walked through the heaven's gates, I felt so much at home. God looked down and smiled at me from his great golden throne. He said, this is eternity and all I've promised you. Today your life on earth has passed, but here life starts anew. I promise no tomorrow, but today will always last. And since each day is the same, there is no longing for the past. You have been so faithful, so trusting, and so true. Though there were many things you did, sometimes you knew you shouldn't do. You have been forgiven, and now at last you're free. So won't you come and take my hand and share my life with me? 
So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think we're far apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right here in your heart. Dick Weber was a man that came into my life over 50 years ago. He was my pastor, my mentor. He was responsible for my interest in missions and later became a missionary for many years. He was a dear friend. His family was my family. Our children grew up together and we shared many, many wonderful times together. When my wife and I was on the mission field, Dick and Faith visited us. When we were home on furlough, we would come and visit with them. And then when we retired from the field, we built a house near them, and we've had many years of beautiful, wonderful fellowship. As a missionary traveling around the United States and Canada and other places in the world, I visited many, many homes and met many, many people. I have never in my life met a man like Dick Weber. I've never met a man that spiritual. And in his home, I always considered was a, a spiritual utopia because we had so much fun, so much spirituality, uh, sharing things together. Dick and Faith and my wife and I really enjoyed the times that we had because of the greatness in the heart for the love of the Lord. Two days before Dick died, I visited with him, and he and I had a beautiful time of fellowship and a beautiful time of prayer. Two days later, I got the call that Dick had passed on. This was my brother friend. I had lost the best friend of my life. I loved him, had known him for 50 some years. That was on Monday. The very next day, I buried my wife. She too was my best friend, and I had been with her for over 50 some years. That is a double dose of a, a grief, really, to lose my best friend and my wife at the same time. But you know how I coped with it? I knew without a question of doubt where they were. I knew without a question that they were ready. They were ready to go with the Lord. In fact, Dick was anxious to go with the Lord. But I knew where they were. They were there with the Lord, celebrating. And you know, Faith, you and I, one of these days are going to go and join them, and we're going to celebrate also. But if Dick was standing here today speaking instead of me, there's one question that he would ask all of you. Look into your hearts. And ask yourself, am I ready? My wife and Dick were both ready. Are you ready? Are you? Are you ready today? Good morning. I'm Jennifer. I'm uh, Dick Weber's granddaughter. I'm his favorite granddaughter because I'm his only granddaughter. <laughs> and it has been a joy to be his granddaughter. Um, when I think about the legacy that grandpa has left behind, I think of Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Grandpa's love for Jesus was passed to my father and down to me and now to my three children. It just hits you sometimes. <laughs> I think I'm crying the most because I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for, um, for Grandpa's faithfulness to Jesus and um, thankful for his life um, because he chose to follow Jesus. Now I get to because I saw Jesus be real in his life and real in my parents' life. and I'm just so thankful. And I'm singing the song today that he, that he chose, and I think it's perfect. <laughs> no one ever cared for me like Jesus. Boy, would he want us to know that, wouldn't he? I'm going to get through this. I really am. <laughs> so sweet. I would love to tell you what I think 
of Jesus since I found in him a friend so strong and true I would tell you how he changed my life completely he did something that no other friend could do no one ever cared for me like Jesus there's no other friend so kind as he take the sin and darkness from me oh how much he cared for me all my life was full of sin when Jesus found me all my heart was full of misery and woe Jesus placed his strong and loving arms around me and he led me in the Jesus, there's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Every day he comes to me with new assurance. More and more I understand his words of love. But I'll never know just why he came to save me. Till someday I see his blessed face above. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so as he no one else could take the sin and darkness from me oh how much he cared oh how much he cared oh how much he cared for me Goon Squad. <laughs> Buckle up, I wrote a book. <clears throat> I'm kidding. Grandpa liked to laugh. Um, but I am going to have to read it, so I hope you don't mind. Um, but I remember the yearly trips over the river and into the woods for Thanksgiving. As a kid, the meal was legendary as the wait for it was also legendary. Seemed to always wake up early on Thanksgiving due to a combination of excitement and Grandpa's loud, joyful, early morning organ serenades. <coughs> uh, but I would, I would wake up early and I'd go and watch the news or Thanksgiving and then we'd, to pass the time, we'd play games. Oh, did we play games. I remember Grandpa's skill level in each of these games was epic, although I'm pretty sure he invented about half of them, so <laughs> I'm not sure how fair it really was. Um, I remember the train whistles. I remember the, tr the tire swing, shooting cans with a BB gun. I remember once the meal had begun on Thanksgiving that I would pile my plate high, and Grandpa would say, don't waste what's on your plate. I never really understood um, fully until somewhat recently, but, you know, before we'd, uh, <clears throat> we always pray. Yeah. 
And he would get emotional to like this. And I'm like, come on, Grandpa. I'm hungry. My plate's full. But he would get emotional. And uh, I never got it. Right now, I can't read. <laughs> um, but the love he had for us and for our Lord was deep and that he knew that life was fleeting. So joyful tears was a natural response. You taught us a lot, Grandpa. How to pick off a can from 15 to 20 yards. How to be strategic in a game of dominoes. But mostly how to serve Jesus well in the life we have here and now. Don't worry, your legacy will continue. And I won't waste what's on my plate. My name is Greg and um, another one of the grandsons. Um, had a lot of great memories with Grandpa. Um, just kind of made a list. Um, some of my favorite memories. Um, just remember hiking around in the woods at their house. Um, he loved to go explore and um, just remember playing in the woods a lot. Um, like John, remember the tire swing, um, shooting the Coke cans with BB guns. Um, I remember raking leaves for hours and uh, ended up jumping in them and then eventually burning them. Um, so that's probably why I love catching stuff on fire so much. <laughs> um, used to love going out in his workshop and um, help him build and paint things. Um, went on picnics, canoe rides, um, splitting firewood, making fires in the fireplace, and um, he loved playing the organ in the morning, as John said. <laughs> um, watching 6 o'clock news in his recliner, he always had a bag of pretzels beside him. Um, and then there was Thanksgiving. Uh, he was always the designated potato masher and turkey carver. Um, he would always read a passage out of the Bible um, during Thanksgiving dinner. Um, he loved playing board games, um, and that's something that is carried through our family. Um, and we'll continue to pass down. We always play board games every time the family gets together. Um, he loved talking about old cars, how he used to work on them, um, and all the cars that he used to own. Um, and I used to love helping him build things and work on stuff. Um, that's probably where I got my love of working with my hands and uh, building things. Um, but he always made sure that we put everything back in its place, everything had its place, and there's probably nothing that frustrated him more than something that was out of place. Um, and I'd say most importantly, he loved God. Um, loving the Lord is something that has been passed down through each generation and is something that will continue to be passed down. Um, as Sonny mentioned before, one of my greatest uh, memories was him baptizing me. Um, when I was in the sixth grade, and couldn't think of a better person than him to baptize me. But he always reminded us to keep God in the center of our marriage and relationships and in everything that we do. And every time I saw him, he always asked to make sure that I was doing my devotions every day. And he was very happy when we said yes, and when we said no, he always got a lecture. <laughs> um, and for as long as I can remember, um, he's always talked about how he's wanting to go to heaven. And now he's finally home. I also have a letter from um, my brother who's doing mission work in Southeast Asia. So he couldn't be here, but he sent me a letter for me to read for him. As I write this, I am about 9,000 miles away 
I wish I could be there to celebrate the life of my grandpa and spend time with my family. I will always remember my grandpa as a strong and passionate man. I will miss the times we played board games at their house and ate way too much food. I always counted on him to be there for me. For me. When I told him I was moving overseas to be a missionary, he was overjoyed. As I, as I kid, as a kid, I loved getting foreign money from Nana and Papa. I always remembered thinking how cool it was that they got to travel all over the world. Now I realize that they weren't just traveling, but doing what they were called to do by God. He is still impacting the nations even today. I was explaining to one of my local friends here about heaven and asked him what he thought about the afterlife. I was able to share with him about my grandpa passing away recently. Without going into too much detail about the culture here, I'll just say it's a very sad affair. When someone dies, there is very little hope for the afterlife. I explained how we are celebrating by my grandpa going to heaven and how he's in a much better place because he followed Jesus. I told my friend how my grandpa looked forward to walking with Jesus in heaven. I could tell that was the first time that he's heard about the afterlife in such a hopeful way. In that moment, I felt like this is where my grandpa would have wanted me to be. Yes, I may be 9,000 miles away, but he always wanted me to seek out God's, God's kingdom first, and I am thankful that he taught me from an early age. I will deeply miss him, but I will always be thankful for the life that he lived and the impact that he made on so many people. Hi, how's everyone? I'm Josh Weber, I'm grandson. The favorite grandson for quite a few years, I'd like to add, <laughs> until these guys came along. <laughs> Ruined it. Um, uh, President Abraham Lincoln famously was written uh, about like this. His conscience was the strongest element of his nature. His affections were tender and warm. His whole nature was simple and sincere. He was pure and then was himself. Uh, I think most of you will agree that I could easily be written about my grandfather um, and the quality of his character. With that being said, um, I'd like to present my case as to why this was not always true about my grandfather. Um, I could argue for hours on this, but I, uh, I, I think that I'm going to take three character traits to uh, to explain why he was not fair. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry, fairness is the first one. Uh, so as most of you know that I, uh, I travel usually the furthest distance to uh, come home for Thanksgiving and, um, and Thanksgiving dinner. And I think that that, you know, that obviously means that I should get the most turkey skin. I just, I know that that's debatable, but um, you know, Makes no sense, but in this man's eyes, um, he always thought it was a fair share for every one of the jackals that were uh, that were anxiously awaiting their turkey skin. Um, I tried bribing him with grandma's cookies. Spoiled, he gets those every day, so that's no no good. Um, nothing worked. Um, my lifelong rivals can attest to this that. You know, we uh, definitely unfair in that capacity, I think, that awful character trait. Um, we'll move on to trustworthiness. Um, uh, I think we all know, and we've established, I think, the, the games. I think we all know that it's impossible for a man to have won that many games of horseshoes uh, cornhole and whatever we call that marble jumping game. I, I forget. Wahoo. Thank you. There we go. Um, nobody can be that good without cheating. I know. I've tried. With his back turned, I often would kick a horseshoe a couple, couple of inches to try and keep it competitive. Um, but uh, keep in mind, I have no, I have no proof of this. I, I could never actually catch him doing it. So. But, um, but nobody can be that bored at, good at board games. It's just not possible. Um, I feel like some of you guys have, have not, uh, not agreeing with me on this, but that's okay. Um, I'd like to tie this into uh, a 
the last point, the last character trait, it's uh, that I think that okay, compassion. Uh, character trait is defined by someone who feels deep, deep sympathy and pity for the suffering and misfortune of others and the desire to do something to alleviate their suffering. Now, I don't like to lose, and he knew this, and uh, I, I feel like the public agony that was inflicted by him consistently beating me and beating all of us, I believe, was, uh, I think he quite enjoyed that. <laughs> um, you know, so uh, compassion, I think not. Um, now, most of you would think uh, my grandparents' tireless efforts to help the suffering in Haiti and all over the world. Um, the only reminder, you know, I, I, I feel that I'm happy to expose him for, uh, for what we, what I now can relay that he enjoyed these things. You know, it was a, I don't know, in all seriousness, you know, he was a beacon of perseverance, devotion, kindness, love, and joy. Uh, his infectious laugh, you know, made us smile from across the cow a crowded game room. Um, his overwhelming integrity uh, shines in all of us in one way or another and will forever be molded properly because of that. And I appreciate that. And I think we all owe him a debt of gratitude for how well he raised each and every one of us. Um, Timothy 4.7 uh, I have fought the good fight I have finished the race I have kept the faith Grandpa uh, it's an honor to follow in your footsteps you have fought the good fight you clearly won the race you have held the lines sir uh, we'll take the watch from here, and may you rest in peace, my friend. Thank you. I think it's great to celebrate like that. I really do. And the reason that a man like this could have fun, could rejoice, could have a great time. Don, were you going to share? You were? Oh, we all come on. I'm just, I'm just eager to worship a little bit more, I guess. Sorry about that. Y'all come on. Please forgive me. <laughs> okay. I apologize to you. He said two minutes. I worked really hard. It might be two minutes and 30 seconds. I'm, try, I'm trying my best. 93 years. Wow. Um, Dad, today I'm remembering just a few of the many things that I loved about being your daughter. For my fifth okay. birthday, I'm good. <laughs> for my fifth birthday, I wanted a red bike. And you were a new pastor at a new church. Money was tight. I didn't think I would get a bike. But my dad, being my dad, found an old bike, beat up, and he took it, pounded all the dents out of it, sanded it down, and painted it. And he rolled it out on my birthday, and I had what I thought, and it looked like a brand new bike because he was such a perfectionist. So it really did look just perfect. Um, whew. After that, he took me outside and ran beside me to make sure I didn't fall. And that was my dad, always looking out for us. I'm so thankful that at a young age of six, while you were giving an invitation, I was able to go forward and give my life to Christ. I loved it when we went up to visit your family in Buffalo, the fireworks, the 4th of July, the kick the can with my brothers and cousins, <laughs> and all the board games, and especially Wahoo. <laughs> Watching you and your brother, Paul and Sister Grace, literally crying from all the silly jokes in the board games is what I love seeing. I love seeing you with your brother, Paul, sit on his front porch overlooking the lake. You would sit for hours laughing and reminiscing about the good old days. 
You are best friends. I loved our family gatherings at our house in Canton and will always hold all the wonderful memories that we had. I loved it when you baptized both our sons, Greg and Andrew. It was such a joy to take you and mom to all the apple festivals and the big shanty festivals. <laughs> Dad, as you can see, he, that was his favorite thing to do. He would sit and wear his World War II hat and just wear it so proudly and he would sit and he would enjoy every minute of all the people that would come up and they would just share all the memories. The veterans would come and they would just share the stories and people would come up and thank him for his service. And um, so he loved our great country. I will um, always treasure and love you for every Valentine's Day. He gave me a card and a heart filled with chocolates. And he always called me his little girl. Lastly and most important is how you love God, which was the firm foundation you built your life and your family around. Thank you for showing us the importance of a church family, biblical values, and hard work. You've left us a wonderful legacy. Um, when you were passing away, um, we were in Asia, and on our way home, we just left Andrew and Megan, and at the Seoul airport, we got the call from Dan and Mom that Dad had passed. Andrew had um, knew, known this, and he sent me a text and it just was simply what he um, shared with us was Papa's last day was his best day. I'm closing with a few words from Streams in the Desert, which are my parents' favorite um, devotionals from L.B. Cowan. It's a devotional that um, I've learned to love as well. Um, one of the passages is, God is in every tomorrow, therefore I live for today. Certain of finding at sunrise, guidance and strength for my way. Power for each moment of weakness, hope for each moment of pain. Comfort for every sour, sorrow, sunshine and joy after the rain. He goes before us each day to strengthen and restore. Therefore, all is well. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dan Weber, and the oldest of the three children. And uh, with us here today, if you haven't met them, are my sister Dawn and my brother Daryl, and of course, Mama Faith. Hi, Mom. Also, my dad has a brother, Paul, and a sister, Grace, who are in his hometown of Buffalo, New York. And they're actually live streaming this today, and they're watching up there. And uh, they are physically unable to join us today, and, uh, but they wanted me to express their love and their respect in honor of Dad today. And Dad, Paul, and Grace were as close as brothers and sisters could ever be. They had a common kindred spirit and a common faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I love that. So I was thinking about this. What did Dad love? I put his picture up on my phone, and I just sat down the other day and said, what did, what's Dad all about? You know, three big pictures are so beautiful today and everybody has shared and I'd like to thank all of you for coming and just being a part of this celebration of life. Uh, those of you from BFW and American Legion and friends and family from missions and it's just great to have you here. You come from far distances and we, uh, we appreciate it so much. First and foremost, my dad loved Jesus as you could figure from today. After World War II, dad's whole life was spent in ministry and he spent most Sundays speaking in church, either at his own church or as a visiting speaker, and that was the ministry God called him to. As preacher's kids, or PKs, as we were called, uh, we saw Dad's ministry up close and personal. We were, kids were there every Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night prayer meeting, youth group, Sunday school. We were there. And we were watching and learning, and Daryl, sometimes even fighting, weren't we, <laughs> in the early days. Uh, but what I saw as the oldest son was consistency. Dad lived what he preached. Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. 
and all your mind. And that was dad's heart. He didn't waver. Whether it was at Blossom Church in Buffalo, New York, his first pastorate, or whether it was at the Boulevard Bible Church in Florida for over 20 years serving OMS International Ministries, he always had the same mission. His passion was to bring the gospel of Jesus to everybody he would meet. Well, my dad also loved studying the Bible and praying. And mom and dad were prayer warriors, and I know that because sometimes we'd go to bed in my later years, and uh, I would go to the bathroom to brush my teeth, and I could hear dad, his bedroom was next door, praying fervently for his family and his country and for his community and his church and for souls of those who needed to know Christ. I'll never forget that, to hear your grandfather praying for you without me knowing it. It was pretty cool. Um, now, that doesn't mean Dad was perfect, <clears throat> as you've heard. Um, of course, none of us are, are we? But we like to elevate the good, and uh, Dad was just fantastic. But his driving. Um, he was fast and impatient, and uh, the speed limit, well, that was optional. I think, actually, it's in the Weber genes. I'm not sure, but I'm kind of finding that as a, as a common thing. Uh, and as you heard, he is a perfectionist. Everything had a place. Milk, second shelf on the right. Tools, the hammer was in the second drawer of the toolbox, and lo and behold, you don't want to put it in the third, or the first. He was a perfectionist, and uh, mom found out about these things a little bit later, soon after they were married, but by then it was too late. <laughs> mom said last week, uh, when we were together in hospice, that uh, dad should really be happy in heaven because everything's perfect there. <laughs> My dad loved mom and our family. That was another big love of his life. Mom and dad were in ministry right from the start of their marriage. And for over 66 years, they loved each other and served each other and others selflessly. And they raised us kids in a household of faith. Thank you, mom. Thank you. And dad was in church ministry, which is if you're a pastor, or you know it's very demanding and it takes a lot of time. But dad was never too busy to spend time with us kids and with mom. And family gatherings at Thanksgiving, as we've always talked about, are just great. Dad would horse around with the grandkids and he would play games, sing songs, share a favorite Bible verse. He always liked to have a time where we would focus on Jesus, a life story, a testimony, traditions that we now share with our children and our grandchildren. Finally, Dad loved his country. Over the last years, Dad often wore his World War II veteran's hat when he went out, just like you see in the picture here. And people would stop by, Costco, Home Depot, Walmart, and he would just beam because they would say, thank you for your service, sir. Wow, I loved that when I was with him. So today, Dad, for the last time, for 92 years of a life well lived. Thank you for your service to your family, to your country, to the churches you pastored, to OMS International, and to God's kingdom eternal. Well done, Dad. Well done. Thank you for your service. To God be the glory. Fantastic. All right, now we can sing. If you're able to, I'd love for you to stand and let's worship. When peace like a river attend of my way, when sorrow Yeah. 
I just have to first say thank you. I, I just have to say thanks uh, for the way Dan and Daryl and Don. Thanks for the way that you love your dad. And thanks for the way that you guys have honored your dad. Um, and Miss Faith, can I just say thank you, thank you, thank you for the way that you loved your husband 66 plus years. Thank you for sacrificing for him. Thank you for blessing him. Thank you for committing your life to him, for being devoted to him, for following him, and most of all, thank you for the way that you loved your husband. You all are an example to us. You inspire us. Sitting here makes me want to be a better son and makes me want to be a better dad listening to y'all. And sitting here makes me want to be a better husband so thank you. Thank you for the example that you have set for us, for all of us here today. Thank you. I want to briefly just share two passages of Scripture with you. One is Dick's favorite passage, and then one of my favorites. One of Dick's favorite passages, most of you will probably know, is Psalm 23. Does anybody here know Psalm 23? Yeah? Some of you probably even have it memorized. Um, I'd like to read it for you from the King James Version. I think that's Dick's preferred version of this passage the Lord is my shepherd I shall not be in want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside quiet waters he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake and yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's Dick's favorite passage. That's not just a passage that he liked to read. That wasn't just a passage that he liked to preach. That's, that's the way that this guy lived. He lived this scripture as truth. He didn't just believe it. He didn't just believe it for you or say it at funerals to comfort others. This is a passage that he lived. The first verse of that beautiful passage, Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. A newer translation of this passage of this line says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. I want you to think about that for just a second. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. You lack nothing. If the Lord is your shepherd, you lack nothing. The world might tell you you lack uh, your employer might tell you, you you lack. Some friends or maybe even family, parents or children might say something about a way in which you lack. If the Lord is your shepherd, you lack nothing. Dick Weber lived knowing he lacked nothing. He lacked nothing. Hey, can you guys do me a favor real quick? Could you tell the person sitting next to you, you lack nothing. Go ahead. It's okay. 
Go ahead. You lack nothing. Husbands, could there be any greater gift that you could give to your wife than to say, honey, you lack nothing. Wives, could there be any form of higher respect than to say to your husband, honey, you, you lack nothing. Dick Weber believed that the Lord is his shepherd. I lack nothing. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. I will not fear. I will not fear because you are with me. I will not fear war. You are with me. I will not fear an enemy, for you are with me. I will not fear death. Dick Weber didn't fear death. He was looking forward to a homecoming. I will not fear. Why? Because my good shepherd is here. He's with me. And just think about this right now. Where is Dick Weber but with God, seeing face to face as God fully is, knowing as he's fully known, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. The central promise of the Bible. The one promise that said over and over and over again in the Bible is, I'm with you. I am with you. Jesus is Emmanuel. He is God with us. I will not fear. I lack nothing. Not because of all the good that Dick did, but because of the good shepherd because of how good our God is. I want to share just one of the coolest things Sonny referenced a few minutes ago. God had been leading Dick most of his life, as all of you know. But in the last several years, in the last several years, God was up to something pretty cool in Dick's life. I love how good our God is that he doesn't just bring us to a point of salvation and then wanders away, but he walks with us and talks with us and tells us that we are his own. And in these last few years, God had been doing something pretty cool with Dick. As Sonny mentioned, these last few years, Dick had become just a little more tender. God's work was not finished with Dick. In the last several years, he began to express emotion a little bit more. He began to listen a little more attentive, attentively. He began to share more purposefully. And he was a man of blessing in those last years. Here's a lesson I think we can learn from Dick. No matter who you are or where you are, it's never too late. No matter who you are, or where you are, it's never too late to trust in God. It's never too late to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's never too late. It's never too late to ask for forgiveness. It's never too late to extend forgiveness. No matter how old you are or how young you are, it's never too late to be loved by our good God. That's one thing that I think we could all learn from Dick in these last years. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Not just some of the days, all of the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Dick is whole and he's home. He's home. One last passage. Uh, one of my favorites. We've been talking about this, actually one of Sonny's favorites. I didn't know this until we started talking about it a couple of months ago. In the very back of the Bible, there's this really short book called Jude. It's right before Revelation. It's just one, it's just one page. And verse 24 and 25 say this. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy... To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, both now and forevermore. We sing this old hymn. I was trying to remember this old hymn, and I had to ask a couple people. I asked Miss Shirley back there, what was the old hymn that we used to sing where, it would, where the line said, we stand faultless before the throne, faultless before the throne, Miss Shirley said, on Christ the solid rock. You might know that old hymn. We stand faultless before the throne. Listen, 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 y'all. Because of who Jesus is, 
Dick Weber stands faultless before the throne. Faultless. Think about that for just a second. Faultless before the throne. Can you picture that today? Like for real, can you picture that? Like this is really happening. This isn't make this isn't preacher talk here. Like this is really happening. Can you picture Dick Webb standing before the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, faultless? He's faultless as he stands next to Jesus, and Jesus is standing next to Dick. Scripture says, with great joy. I know you guys have lots of pictures in your mind of Dick. I have a picture in my mind of a funny conversation about in which he pointed out something that I lack. I lacked a suit and a tie when I preach on Sundays. And he just thought, do you have a suit? (laughs) I don't know what picture you have or what memory that you have, but I want to invite you to consider this picture, this picture The picture of Jesus standing next to Dick with great joy, presenting him before the throne. Father, this is him. This is the one faultless with great joy. This is Dick Weber, God. This is Dick Weber, Father. This is him. This is the one. My beloved. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And I present him to you, Father, faultless before the throne. You and I? You and I, in God's sight, if he is our shepherd, if we have believed and received, we too lack nothing. There is nothing that we have to fear. And we will be presented faultless. You will be presented faultless before the throne. If for some reason this is foreign to you, if for some reason you're having a hard time grasping what I'm talking about today, I'd love for you to consider Dick's life. It is a testimony of the truth which I'm talking about today. But if you have never come to a place where you've put your faith and trust in Christ, I would be remiss than to give you that opportunity to do it today. That's what Dick would want every person in this room to know Jesus and be fully known by Jesus. So if you don't know Jesus, maybe here in just a few minutes after we finish, maybe you could tell the person sitting next to you, I I want that. I want what Dick had. I want to know that I lack nothing. I don't want to be afraid. And I too want to be presented before the throne with great joy as faultless. Let's pray together. God, thank you that the perishable has now been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. Thank you that death has been swallowed up in victory. God, give us your spirit that we, each one of us, in the midst of mourning, that we might be able to sing a hallelujah to a good God who saves, and a Savior who brings the dead to life. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
And when at last his face I see those nail prints in his hands Humbly at his feet I'll bow and I'll pray Thank you for your love for me Thank you for your love for me Dear Lord, thank you for your love for me and humbly at his feet I'll bow and I'll pray thank him for his love for me There is a fountain filled with blood because he received that because we received that this next hymn is so perfect that he picked for us to sing today when we all get to heaven amen it's because of jesus and that's what he would tell us right now it's because of jesus if you haven't received him as your lord and savior Please, please do that. Jesus loves you so much. And that's the message of our dear brother's heart for you because he knew Jesus. So let's rejoice. Let's join what he's doing right now. He is rejoicing. He is worshiping Jesus. And we're going to do that together right now. So if you're able to, I'd love for you to stand and let's sing together. The words are on the back also. Right here if you want. Here we go. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory here we go onward to the prize before us soon his beauty will be soon the pearly gates will open we shall tread the streets of gold sing it out when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Amen. Remain standing, please.
we believe that Brother Weber is in heaven today. And he can't come back. If he could, I don't believe that he would. <laughs> but if he could, I believe there's two things he'd say to us today. One, trust in Jesus Christ as Savior. It's eternally different. And two, it's worth it. It's worth it. Serve the Lord. We are here but for a short time. In all of eternity, we will be with our Heavenly Father. Trust Christ. Walk with Him. Let's pray. Father, Your goodness to us is beyond explanation. The privilege that we had in knowing Richard Weber is truly a blessing of this life. And Father, as we reflect on his life, it is impossible to do without recognizing the love that he had for you. And as we go, Father, may we carry that love. May we be ambassadors. May we recognize that in him was the fullness of your grace manifest. And may we strive, may we long to have that fellowship and walk with you. Father, the day will come, apart from your coming again, that each one of us will one day lay in a casket before friends and family. And may it be that we have a testimony that carries the honor and glory of your name the way that Richard Weber's has. Father, bless now. We need your grace for this hour. We know that it is sufficient. So guide us and strengthen us, we pray. Amen. We will conclude our service today at the National Cemetery there in Canton.